Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading channel. If today is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to view any of our over 500 videos arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find something both entertaining and useful to watch. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. If you live in a house without a basement or an apartment that you own or a condo, there is a good chance that you have an intake for your air conditioning system somewhere in your living space like we have here. Now the problem with this is that it is very old style and tired. So what we are going to try to do today is to, to bring it up, make it better looking and improve it. So stick around and we are going to take you along in the journey of replacing this with something more, what will say, aesthetically pleasant or what? Yeah, definitely something a little more decorative. Now ours is going to be a little more complex because we have a, a metal uh, surround here that we cannot remove. It is attached to our unit and the wall. But in most cases you will not have to contend for that. The steps in general are going to be the same in, in any case. So stick around and we're going to start building. And I, I switch it because we need the opposite this way. Now that's not safe. Can someone hold it here? You're comfortable there? It was working a little bit. All right. So folks, what we did here, we created a, a zero clearance uh, jig of sorts, so we can see exactly where our marks are. Because precision is important in this specific um, project, we are going to cut the vertical as well, and then we're going to go inside and do a first dry fit to make sure that our pieces are the right dimensions. So we're going to cut the vertical, this is the horizontal, and we're going to be right back with you. Well, folks, here we are, still in the shop, and we changed plans. We changed to this style of wood for two reasons. We wanted to go with something more simplistic, and secondly, we didn't have enough of, of the more elaborate wood that we, we were trying to use, primarily because we try to use what we have. We don't want to go to the store and buy some more. The process remains the same. We're going to cut the pieces to length and, and width, and then we're going to attach them together, make a, a square, Fill the square with our metal mess. But, but we did also change the design in that since we're not using a, a as decorative a piece of border wood, we're not going to make the miter this time. Right? And the miter was more because this piece of wood did not have the same uh, thickness throughout, as you can see here, right? Mm -hmm. And you cannot butt join boards unless they are the exact thickness throughout the board, right? Mm -hmm. So these could not be used without miters. This can be used without miters. Okay. All right, so let's cut this. Can someone feel that this is... Bring it to the blade. Okay. Hold it. Do you have it? Hold on. That's in the blade. Okay. Don't put it too much because. Is that good? Or should I back it off? No, it, it's fine. You you know. I mean, I can bring this all up and down. Right. 
All right. All right. All right. So we decided Let's, to go with pocket screws for this project. We've set up our jig. And if we did it right, we should have a perfect pocket screw, right? Yeah. Now, it is important that you, you're making sure that it is on the same side on both, right? So we, that's correct, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work on reverse. Who would have thought? Again, the key here is make sure you put both pockets on the same side. Mm -hmm. What? Just um, trying to see the holes. Okay. And we need to do the same on the other one. And I don't know if those are the long or the short. Doesn't make a those difference, really. And we will probably add a little bit of uh, glue here as well, right? Mm -hmm. Again, make sure you're putting your hole on the same side. Turn you don't have it on the same side. I do oh, have it on the same side. Okay. And that's it. Done? The, well, done. not the project, the, the hole making process is done. So we're going to reinforce our uh, connection by uh, putting some wood glue in the edges and we're going to use screws and uh, pocket hole screws specifically. And our uh, Craig clamp is not going, it doesn't want to work in this application so we're going to use a normal clamp and we hope to achieve the same uh, outcome, right? You good? Nice and tight. All right, let's assign the other one. Align, not assign. Glue again. Why you? No, don't do that. We're going to lose orientation. We need to go there. Honey. I don't want to make a mistaken. And we don't have a, a workbench yet, so we're using our table so because it's the most flat surface we have, right? And this needs to be done in a flat surface, so you will get the best results you can out of it. Does it? So let's use that and we can just press against this so after we lock it and we always say that woodworking is about making boxes and squares and here we are this is our uh, what we'll call it frame and using this way of course you can make frames for pictures and things like that or display boxes and we have our pocket screws <laughs> that was horrible we have our pocket screws All right, great. So using our frame as a reference point, we're going to mark our, uh, what we'll call that screen, mm -hmm. our screening material to the appropriate dimensions, and then we're going to cut it so we can attach it to our frame and become our new screen for the AC unit. Okay. You need to make at least two marks so we can go across. No, not there yet. Here. Um. All 
All right, so we're going to be back with okay. you. And now uh, we're going to use a new evolution saw and cut through the screen. Like freaking butter. Don't you love it when tools work? Okay. Straight. Can you see me now? Yeah. Forgive me, Father, for I've seen. And with our screen cut, making sure that we are on the back side of the frame, we are going to attach the screen to the frame. But before we do that, we have decided to stain this frame. So we're going to do our staining first. So stick around for that exciting part. What? what? I'm working my fingers. Is it done? Oh, I'm in the wrong side. You want to do it? You can do it. It's not your technique. I'm just worried about your fingers. My fingers are fine. This is very aggressive, yeah? And of course, when you use rough wood for your project, like this is a two by two, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Rough wood. Uh, sanding is necessary. Or one by two, maybe. Maybe one by two, yeah. Either way, this is not furniture grade. It stains and it looks very good, so don't be fooled by that. We've made a lot of projects using uh, this type of lumber and they come out looking fantastic. But a little bit of sanding is, is required and for the purists we tell you that sanding is always required. I'm not sure if I'm is on that, that camp. Yeah, you're a purist, I mean. I'm a caveman. You you are further developing the evolutionary chain. And and Mrs. Wizard likes to hand sand. As you notice I was using my power sander, but I wasn't elegant enough for this process. So and realistically, you can do a much finer detail with hand sanding than a machine sanding. But I'm a machine guy. Machine guy. So, Mrs. Wizard now is uh, taking all the uh, remaining pieces of wood from the sanding. And we are getting ready to actually stain the piece. This is insulated foam, it's really inexpensive, we don't have it here for insulation. But this is a good uh, tip if you want to cut, especially using a truck, so these are invaluable. You don't do any damage to anything and you have a very secure grip on your project. So I'm showing them the cut where you made it with the track saw, do you want to talk about that? Well, that is too long, I shouldn't have made 
Well, I mean, you can talk about that, but you can. S this is what happens when we used it. We maybe put the blade depth a little deeper than we needed to, but it still was a secure surface to use without damaging the underneath. And it will always make a cut, no matter, I mean, it would just be a much longer cut. Right, right. Because in order to cut the material, you have to be a little past the material. Deeper than the material is, okay. And the magic of stain commences. I would recommend you don't stain the back. Uh -huh. and it always makes the wood come alive, doesn't it? Top Fox. Grain. Yeah, but we need to, we cannot have a, a silence. Mm. Have a silence? Right. Mm. We need to have a non-silence. Isn't there music for that? You have music, you have copyright strikes. I thought you had stuff you can use. I do. Oh, see? And I have used it on occasion. And so far it has gone well. So we, we secured the screen to the back of the frame using thumbtacks and this is what you're going to see from the front. So we are satisfied with this look, aren't we Mrs. Wizard? Mm -hmm. And of course you can do whatever finish you want, you can paint it, you can leave it raw, you know. So let's move on. The next step, we're going to, because we have a metal frame that this is going to recess on, we thought that the best way to attach it to the frame is using neonidium magnets. So that's what we're going to try and set up in just the next moment. So one of the things we're going to do it later on, we didn't have time today, but we are going to use those brackets. We really don't need the strength, but they will add a little more of a a charm to the piece that will make it look a little more uh, rustic and the reason we're not using them today is because they are silver and they simply don't match we either want them black or we want them the color of the screen right so if we had silver screen we could have done it but we don't so we're not doing it does that make sense so there are a lot of things you can do to is embellish the right work to, to embellish this project and make it more unique to you and we will definitely add those at a later time after we, we paint them. But for now, everything is pretty much ready to, to put in place. We are waiting for the neonidium magnets to be cured with the adhesive on the piece. And then we are going to go on to the next step. So stick around. the main problem? No, this is the main problem. That's what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah, I was talking about this. Oh, we were okay. pointing at the other. So fortunately we have this that was the latch on the old system and we need to try and mitigate this called precursive mitigation flattening them you don't like precursive mitigation? percussive maintenance, yes it's one of my favorite things to do and we're slowly approaching the point of no return, right? All right, and now the next step is we need to cut this, um, what do you call it? Hinge. Hinge, off. Okay, and this is how you remove riveted things, right? Well, it has rivets too. Uh -huh. uh, so do you need to do those as well? Well, yes, let's finish though and, and then I'll do them. Okay. 
Are you recording? We need to be talking when we're recording. All right, friends, and here is our finished install project. And we think it made a, a big difference from this look. Right? Mm -hmm. From this <laughs> to this. Okay. All right, friends, we hope you enjoyed this simple but very useful project that we, we saw you today. And this is in continuation of our series of how to improve your homestead with very inexpensive uh, ways. Now, I don't know how much the screen cost. I think that was the expensive part of this project. Melodic interruption, intermission. But it's still a very inexpensive project that can bring up the, the, the look of your house substantially. Right? At least we think so. If you did enjoy this episode, we will ask to do us a favor and give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know down in the comments what else you might want to see in, in future episodes. And keep in mind that the, the methods we saw you today are very adaptable to every, any project you want to do. This is how you can make simple frames. This is a basic way of how you're going to start uh, drawers. Most everything you do in woodworking, I would say probably 95% is boxes and, and square frames. Wouldn't you agree? So stick around and we plan much more fun and useful projects for you. From the Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Alpida and the Airbud Homesteading uh, channel, we hope you have a great week, stay st safe, wear your mask, wash your hands and we are going to see you soon. Stay well friends. <laughs>